Poland, where I got an undergraduate degree in computer science. Currently, I live in Germany, where I'm about to finish my master's studies in simulation science at the RWTH, at Technical University in Aachen. Uh, I came a uh, few, few weeks ago, in the beginning of April, to Louisiana to work for a few months at CCT to work exactly on that project. Uh, it has started exactly one year ago, uh, where my project has been selected for uh, GSOC. Um, my supervisor was Hartmut Kaiser. And the main goal of project, well, the project was quite experimental. What we wanted to do was to try um, C++ AMP, standard who has already few years, who has al who's already few years old, and to try if it, we can integrate it with HPX and get, well, at least one experimental kernel to work. Of course, as a student, I was uh, over-optimistic. I expected to have something nice working, but we got some experimental support. We also tried uh, kernel SQL, which is qu uh, much, much, uh, much uh, newer technology. So, but, but the results were promising, so we continued the work. Now I'm working on this in full time. And here today, I want to present our results, where we are today, what we have achieved, what work, what doesn't work, and what, wa what we are going to do in the future. So I will start with very short two minutes, descri two minutes description of HPX to understand uh, where my project is located, or what was the purpose. Uh, then I'm going to present uh, the concept, the extensions to C++ for parallelism. Uh, some of them has been already integrated to C++ 17, most of them didn't, but HPX has implemented them a long time ago. Uh, after that, I will present how uh, the GPU execution policy and executors will be integrated, are already integrated with HPX and the <coughs> existing API. Uh, later, I will discuss and present both standards on which we are working uh, right now. Uh, they are, they are one, uh, one may call them competi uh, competing. They are different in many aspects, but uh, the purpose is basically the same. Uh, after that, I will present the results. I use the stream benchmark just to sh basically to show that something is working, that we have correct results, that we can achieve a very good bandwidth comparable with uh, existing OpenCL or CUDA implementations. Uh, by the end, I will present uh, the current directions, where, we are, where are we going and what we want to achieve in the uh, near future. So, to start, HPX is an implementation of parallax system, uh, parallax model for parallel and distributed applications. Uh, it is purely written in C++, there's a large uh, usage of Boost. Uh, the idea is, has, is to have a one common address space for distributed uh, computing, and to be able to run very lightweight threads, millions of threads uh, with asynchronous computing. Uh, the API which, uh, which HPX uses is, uh, extends the standard C++ in many ways, but generally we try to, be, to have the API uniform and somehow similar. So the user who starts to work with HPX doesn't have to learn a completely new library. Uh, this is a general description of HPX. The underlying uh, runtime, uh, on, on the top of underlying runtime, there are APIs, APIs basically everything uh, based on templates, which uh, implements something which already is in the standard and a lot of extensions. Uh, for example, we have extended concurrency, which is already in the standard. We have implemented parallelism, uh, technical specification, which I think uh, very recently has been accepted to C++ 17, but on top of execution policy, which are well, will be the standard C++, we have also executors, which are another extension, and well, it makes perfect sense to use uh, to use them. Uh, except that we, al we also have other components which well are not uh, prop uh, not proposed into C++. One of them is partitioned vector, which uh, or uh, in current implementation, hides from the user uh, placing the data on different nodes, for example, a cluster nodes, and the uh, user can use segmented algorithm. So from the point of view API, it works exactly the same as in on shared memory pro uh, systems. So uh, my, my project will, uh, is, uh, has been implemented directly on the top in the API as an extension of already existing uh, uh, API. 
this is uh, the general generic view of what we have at that point. We have execution policies. This will be standard C++. Uh, execution policy has to provide, they implement some kind of restrictions on what we, what we can do with executed functions. Uh, then we have the extension, which are executors. Executors say uh, basically where will be uh, where on which device, for example, we can execute uh, our function. Except that we have executor parameters; they are not in the executor extension. I'm not. I don't think so. Uh, this could be chunk size, for example, of Apple applications, so we can get some behavior similar to OpenMP. In my case, I use, for example, kernel name which may be necessary in some scenarios or other GPU parameters. Generally, the executors can take many parameters. And uh, we, of course, we use these execution policies for parallel algorithms, which are basically the topic of my project. So uh, standard specifies three uh, execution policies. This is sequential, which basically means that the fun, uh, whether it's a lambda or whether some operation on the, uh, on vector or other uh, standard container cannot be executed concurrently. We have to go one by other. Parallel means that we can parallelize it how much we want. Parallel vector is basically for vectorization. Uh, HPX also adds uh, two other, which are sequential and parallel but asynchronous, which means that in, uh, instead of just processing and blocking, waiting for results, we get a future and we can just do other things while uh, the algorithm is running somewhere in the backend. Uh, the extend API, and this is C17, for example, for for each, uh, means that we pass the execution policy as a very first argument of the algorithm. In our case, it means that we will bind executors and parameters to the policy. So the API for the algorithm is still the same. It means that our policies are slightly different. Uh, executor, as I said, have to, pro um, have to provide some abstraction for the underlying hardware. Uh, this could be just sequential parallel. It means that parallelize my algorithm however you want. Uh, they could be mo much more specific, for example, targeting specific NUMA domain. In my case, I'm interested in executor for accelerators. Accelerators in that case means uh, right now GPUs, but it could be more generic depending on the usage. Uh, the executor has to implement one function, which is asynchronous execute, which means that he gets a functor and execute it somehow asynchronously. Uh, this is actual implementation for parallel executor, and this is all, except that there is maybe one construct and method for, for serialization. Uh, this works because we have executor trace, which can use it to uh, either execute algorithm uh, synchronously because he can just execute use async and then wait for the results. We have also b bulk overload, which means that we get uh, not only one execution, but ma many multiple execution on, for example, values of iterators. In case of GPU, I will focus mostly on bu uh, bulk execution. Uh, the example, how does it work currently? This mo uh, the most simplest e example one can imagine. We have a vector, uh, fill it with some random values. We want to execute uh, for each and write, just write some values. Uh, if we use the sequential execution policy, it means that basically what will happen is the same as in current implementation. It will be just executed one by uh, in one order. We can also use parallel, and it, it means that it will, be, it will go to uh, some kind of parallel executor. Uh, as I said, we have parameters. Currently, uh, it's mostly in the, let's say, the current version of HPX, not my fork. It's, there are mostly chunk sizes, static, dynamic, auto-guided, so something we know for OpenMP. Uh, and uh, what we have to do, we have to bind our executor with parameters using method uh, with. Uh, method on can be used to bind execution policy with other executor. Task creates an asynchronous executor. Uh, also, uh, as I said, the, uh, we implement HPX implements some extensions to the uh, to futures. So right now it's possible to use them to make basi uh, to basically create a sequence of executions, uh, which is 
which has some very good applications. You can, you can just have very basic data flow and you can express the dependencies on one another execution in a very clear manner. Of course, it means that the GPU executor should be able to do exactly the same thing. So knowing uh, how, how already it works uh, in HPX, the, exec the parallel executor has been implemented one year ago and it has been working greatly from that time. We have to uh, understand how we can, uh, we, if we can extend it in some uh, compatible manner to work with GPUs. First thing is GPU execution policy. Uh, basically, at least in my, uh, at least in the current implementation, the GPU execution policy is almost the same as the parallel. I treat GPU, exec GPU parallelism just an, uh, like, like another kind of parallel execution. However, I want to keep it at that point uh, because we can specialize algorithm for GPU execution policy. I would like not to do it, to have one implementation for parallel and GPU parallel. Unfortunately, it's not possible. I will later explain why. Uh, another benefit, one could argue, is that the user can explicitly say that I want to go to GPU, not to use parallel execution policy with GPU executor, GPU executor but uh, explicitly say that so it's obvious from reading the code. Another benefit is that we hide the type of executor. So depending if uh, you compile HPX with C++ AMP compiler or a SQL compiler, you have different types of executor. Uh, by, hiding, by hiding this definition, this type diff inside execution policy, you just use, use it uh, in your code and you, you may not even be aware at that point whether you will compile it with uh, which compiler. But it will work, you don't have to change anything. In theory, those, those two standards should provide the same behavior. In practice, not always, but that's a completely different story which I will explain later. So if we have execution policy, we need basically executor. We need, a, we need executor which will hide the details about GPU and provide some necessary abs abstraction. So uh, currently GPU executors implement the bulk of the loads for both async and synchronous uh, execution. I do not e implement the uh, one execution, basically just the async execution, because at least from the point of view of GPU, it doesn't make sense to run a function for one, uh, one argument. Also, at that point, uh, executor has knowledge how to put data on device. This is something maybe we don't want to do, as in ACL we want to separate data placement and execution. At least at that point it works, we are not sure uh, how to do it properly. And ex uh, outside the my two executors, there's also CUDA executor. Uh, there is Thomas Heller who is working on that project currently. Uh, maybe we'll work with HC, which is AMD extension. I will also say a few things about that later, comparing it to C++ AMP. But f at least now, now point, we focus, uh, I focus on these two executors. So to understand how do we uh, do the data placement, how to solve this problem, Basically, uh, what does it mean? Uh, that is that we need a separate buffer on the GPU. At that point, we cannot access the host memory. It could be possible on shared memory systems, which, let's say, there are st software st standards who, which can support this. But at that point, we focus on discrete GPU, which cannot uh, directly access uh, CPU memory. It means that we have to create a buffer, transfer the data, uh, submit the kernel, so just execute some code on GPU, wait for the finish, and then when it's finished, we can transfer the data back to the device and we'll have our results on CPU. Which means that at that point, the perfect, uh, perfect solution will be that algorithm deals with it or the executor, basically. So user just uses GPU algorithm, like for each, and gives, it, uh, gives to it the iterator to, let's say, a standard vector. And then somehow, somewhere in the backend, the executor hides it. There are two uh, benefits. One of them is the simplicity. User doesn't have to be even aware that something is uh, being transferred to GPU, and the API stays the same. However, most of the time, we do not want to just submit one job. We want to, have to stay with the data on GPU and run many jobs. 
compute the matrix vector product and then separately compute some property like norm or eigenvalue of the matrix and then after that decide uh, what to do next. In such scenario, uh, this approach would be very bad because it means that after every execution we transfer data back to CPU and we have to continue again. So maybe you should try something different. And one of them would be to wrap the GPU buffers in iterators. It means that user has to sp explicitly create the buffers, but he can use their iterators, very basic iterators, and the algorithm in theory should, uh, should just forward these iterators to executor, who will know what to do deal with it. At the end, when the user uh, decides that he doesn't want to run any more jobs, he can use the synchronized method to transfer data b uh, back to CPU. Uh, we in that scenario, we have much more optimized uh, data transfer, but of course it means that user has to know where to put data, where to put data and how to do it. So maybe the better solution will be a data structure which already placed, places the data on a GPU. And this is something we will be working on in, uh, very soon. So uh, now we know what to, uh, how to integrate GPU execution into HPX, into STL algorithm. When, if, we know how to do it, uh, we, uh, if we know how to create the API and control the behavior, we have to know how to exactly execute C++ code on GPU. Uh, we have started with the standard called C++ AMP. AMP uh, is a Microsoft, uh, Microsoft standard. I think the first release was in Visual Studio 2012. Uh, the current version is 1.2 from March, uh, March 2013. Uh, in the standard you can find many, um, many references to upcoming standard 2.0, but I didn't hear, hear anything about releasing new standard. Maybe they are working on that, on it, maybe not. Generally, the standard allows you to send C++ kernels into a, some kind of accelerator, mostly GPU. Uh, the standard, the specification is rather very generic. It does not uh, say how to implement that. There are some Microsoft extensions, but uh, you could use it to basically to target CUDA or OpenCL uh, runtime. The Microsoft specific extensions means that the code may not, ex may not be portable between Microsoft implementation in Visual Studio and, for example, the Linux, implement uh, Linux compiler with which we have been working. Actually, I, have, I had this problem once. I used the samples uh, and kernels provided by Microsoft as open source and it didn't work. It basically means very Do we have another replacement? We have to separate the other. Okay, so if I understand the problem, 
Right. Uh, in theory, if you just use a partition vector which has uh, allocator for GPU, you don't even need a CPU buffer. You can write there directly. It may be not optimal, but it may work. Okay, and so that's where the that's where the partition vector right. Yes. Uh, yes. This uh, right now it's implemented mostly for CPU nodes, but we want to go into GPU nodes. And you said it was something like a shared memory allocator. Uh, this is something, uh, there is up, uh, there's HSA, which explicitly deals with shared memory standards, a shared memory architecture that from the GPU you can directly access CPU memory. C++ AMP 2.0 mentions uh, th those standards too, SQL uh, does it too, but as far as no, we, we haven't, we don't have hardware which support that right now. I think AMD is working on that, but I don't know what's the current progress. Can we continue? Sure. So, uh, are there any que other questions so far? Okay, so we can continue. So, as I said before, uh, this is a very generic standard. It's open, so uh, there are other implementations. And uh, we need only very few, uh, very few concepts from that standard to make it work. Uh, one of them is accelerator. It is a kind of uh, abstract uh, view of the device. It could be either CPU, it could be uh, GPU. Uh, the app, uh, the accelerator cla class only provides some very basic information. It's not possible directly to just look for GPUs. What you have to do, if you don't, uh, what you have to do is just get the list of allocator accelerators and then uh, find for one which is a GPU. Uh, specification itself. Uh, provides two types, uh, the CPU and uh, a default one, which, which will also be, uh, will be the host device. Uh, there are Microsoft extensions. In practice, of course, uh, you, will, you want to have more accelerator types. You can implement that. Specifications allows for that. You can use the accelerator to just point the algorithm, uh, point the AMP, where to pr put data, where to run your jobs. By default, he will use the default accelerator. Uh, accelerator view works like in Q, if someone knows fr is from already from OpenCL. It means that you send, you can use the accelerator view to control, for example, to wait and f uh, to wait for the for the ending of job. You can use multiple views in a multi-threaded application. You can also just uh, have one accelerator view. So this is how we send jobs, and we have to know how to place data. For that, AMP uh, provides Array. Array is a container which allows you to put data directly on the device. Again, you can use Accelerator to specify on which device. It's uh, n-dimensional. It has a lot of different uh, constructors. Practically, we'll be interested in, in iterator-based constructors. Uh, there is a very liberal, comparing to SQL, uh, liberal type restrictions. It means that uh, each type has uh, needs uh, it's at least four uh, bytes, which uh, excludes uh, booleans or bit fields. And there is on also the alignment of four bytes, I believe. Array is located on accelerator, uh, basically on one. You know on which one it, it is placed. Array view is a completely different uh, concept. I've, I've read one article where they refer to array view as a kind of STL iterator, but it doesn't look at as an iterator at all. It doesn't have any increment operations, but what you can do, you can view the data that, uh, uh, through an index operator. Uh, this makes uh, the copying of data very implicit. It means that if you create an uh, even container just on CPU, you don't have to specifically uh, to imp explicitly create an array. You can use the array view, and then AMP runtime will transfer data from CPU to, to GPU. Uh, how it will be, whether it will be optimal, it's other thing, but you can use it for very short writing of code. So there are constructors for uh, pointers to row data or for con uh, STL containers. So you can use it directly and not create arrays. But of course, it won't work with STL iterators. 
So the most important function is parallel for each, which uh, takes a lambda and allocates it uh, to ex for execution on, on an accelerator. We have extent. Extent uh, basically is an grid of threads with many dimension, uh, dimensions. In our implementations, in person, we just want to run algorithms, which means that one dimension is completely sufficient. We just want as many uh, objects in container to, on as many uh, objects are in container, we just want as many threads, for example. Uh, the function executed on GPU takes one index operator. You can then, uh, from the index, which also is, can be n dimensional, depending on the extent dimensionality, we just uh, can access one, the current position, to for, for example, for, uh, to access on container. Uh, it's defined as an asynchronous. There isn't asynchronous uh, parallel for each. The standard allows for optimizing this and even uh, advises that it should be optimized and just return before the uh, data has be, uh, the computation has finished. But uh, the first touch, the first touch on CPU of data on GPU will uh, will block and wait until it's finished. We can also, of course, use the accelerator view to uh, wait explicitly for the data. There are, of course, as on GPU, many restrictions. It means that at least at that moment we cannot use any types or any f uh, virtual functions or any types of virtual functions. We don't have the support for runtime type informations. We cannot throw exceptions. We d yes. Um, is function pointers also restricted as well? I think so. Uh, also, uh, the question was, uh, can we use function pointers? I didn't put it here, but I would say it's 95% too. Uh, so I'm uh, sure that it also doesn't work. Uh, we can have recursion, which surprised me, because OpenCL doesn't allow it, even in the newest standard, I guess. Uh, it is also since AMP 1.2. Of course, any function you... Uh, because we generate the GPU code during compilation of C++ program, we need, uh, we need to see the definitions of all functions. It is very uh, easy to include templates. There's a keyword, a restrict amp, uh, you, which you have to place after function definition, and in theory, the, f the standard should prohibit using any other function on, uh, on GPU, calling, basically. I've, maybe I did not understand it correctly, but I have observed very inconsistent behavior of compiler for that. It means that sometimes, uh, for functions, uh, it will complain that there has to be a restrict keyword, but uh, for some factors it won't happen. I don't know why, maybe I don't understand it uh, too completely, but maybe it's just a bug in the compiler. But we, you, should, you should assume that uh, the keyword should be there, uh, otherwise the, uh, the program may not compile at all. So how do we submit uh, a kernel? just a generic lambda on, uh, on using only iterators. This is uh, just a hello world example. As you can, uh, I think I did not put the lambda definition, it's my mistake. But what the lambda does, it takes every, uh, every element of the container and increases by one. So G becomes H, D, A, D, I, D, E, and th this is why we get a hello world. We need an extent to uh, specify how many threads we run, and then we use the array to, s to, sub, uh, to place the data on GPU. As we can see, we use only SCL iterators of the containers, so something which will get us an input for an algorithm. Then there's the submission of for parallel for each. Uh, there's it, the lambda, as we see, has, uh, needs a restrict keyword. There's an index as the only uh, argument, and we have to capture arrays and textures are only thing which can be t uh, captured by reference. Everything else has to be explicitly copied to GPU. Uh, it also works, for example, for lambdas or functors. So then we can access the array data and send it to lambda. Lambda, uh, lambda is just lambda you would uh, send to for each. It takes uh, one position in the container er and modifies it. The synchronization is uh, obtained by explicit uh, copying of data back. 
Are there any questions so far on C++ AMP? Okay. HC is another standard. It's called heterogeneous computing. It's a quite novel idea. Uh, there is, I haven't seen any formal specification yet. Uh, there is just one web page with, which describes uh, the differences. Basically, it's very similar. It's almost the same as AMP, but it leaves some restrictions. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, it should deal. Uh, it deals with uh, shared memory systems. So in theory, if you have such hardware and such software uh, support, you could just allocate the data using, for example, malloc, and then uh, ex use it without any transfer on in software. Use it directly on GPU. Uh, the keyword restrict, as I heard, uh, is no longer necessary. They just use uh, somehow go through the abstract syntax tree to find out uh, which function may or should be compiled to GPU. Um, yes. Actually, it requires a, a C++ attribute instead of using the string. Okay. Uh, just uh, uh, the comment was that it requires C++ attributes. I w instead of using restrict. Instead of using restrict, I have to say I was not aware of that. I. I haven't, we haven't worked with HC yet, so it's just, uh, this is what I heard from people who are working on it. The other standard is kernel SQL. It has been developed, as the name says, by Kernels Group, the same guys from OpenCL and OpenGL. Uh, these standards, in, uh, not like AMB, which is very generic, explicitly targets OpenCL platforms. But the general idea is, is the same, to write a C++ code which may be compiled, which could, should be compiled into GPU code and executed uh, in through an OpenCL runtime. It is much younger than AMP. Uh, the previous version 1.2 was May. We mostly work with that. Uh, 2.2 is merged, so it means that there's nothing, I believe, which supports that. And uh, the it supports different versions of OpenCL, which means that the restrictions may be um, may, dif may differ may dif uh, depending on what ha which hardware, with which software support you are using. SQL, uh, uh, as I said, is very similar to OpenCL. So if you look at the standard, there are things which you already know from OpenCL, such as memory buffers, platforms, contexts, or devices. Uh, we do not uh, select accelerator, as in AMP, we, you, we have a selector class. There's default GPU CPU host. Host is a CPU which runs the job and, for example, doesn't have any OpenCL support. And uh, we use Q, as in OpenCL, for submitting the job. We could uh, use the selector to selector to uh, exactly in the queue to know on which device we are uh, uh, submitting jobs. Data placement happens in buffers. S uh, buffers, in practice, from the point of view API, it's quite similar to arrays. Difference is that uh, the memory placement is handled by the SQL runtime. So, as far as I know, we we are we don't have the 100% support that is directly uh, located on GPU. It also means that it, it doesn't point exactly to one piece of memory. It could use different many uh, OpenCL buffers in the backend. Uh, there is one type restriction, which, uh, which is that it has to be C++ standard layout. So I think it's a it's little bit more restrictive than AMP, and we'll see in one example later that we may have problems because of that. Then we have buffer accessor, and this is a thing which is not similar in any means to, uh, to array view. Array view uh, works like a cache. Uh, accessor uh, allows you to transfer the data uh, onto the device on which the accessor is created. It has only index operator, but it allows you to take the row pointer to data. And uh, if we can, we, we have to create the accessor in the queue code, and then we can access uh, the data from buffer on GPU. It also means that we can create an accessor on CPU side, and then uh, request copying of data from buffer to our application on CPU. Uh, this is one example of sending a uh, kernel to iterator. This is the one which is used in parallel STL uh, implementation done by, kernels, done by kernels group. I have used this scheme also in the beginning. What happens here? 
we have this selector, which is the default one. In practice, it will just point to a GPU to the fastest accelerator. We have Q. Uh, the selector means the uh, argument specifies that the Q has to be put uh, on some device. Uh, then we have our data in STL container. So we want to transfer the data using only iterators. One, uh, one way is to put, uh, instead of uh, creating buffer with iterators, which then cannot copy back the data, we can just explicitly create a C, uh, CPU, uh, some kind of buffer, and copy our data. The specific uh, the, uh, deleter for the data requests a copy back to the iterator. It's a little bit complicated. Uh, I don't like it, but it works. And, it, uh, and the behavior is that when the buffer is destroyed, we are sure the data is back, uh, copied back to CPU. But this is only half of the code. It's much more complicated. This is, just send, uh, this is sending kernel. So to Q, we have to send a lambda. And inside the lambda, we have the so-called Q code. Uh, the Q, let's say the, the Q code, it, this is the only place where we can create accessor to the data. Our lambda just increments the data. It's perfect lambda you can send to a, a for each. And the parallel for is somehow similar to the amp uh, for. You also get index as an as an uh, main argument. The ma main uh, difference is that we have class hello world, which is which works as a kernel name. What does it uh, mean? I will explain in a second. Second. But the other idea to send uh, data for iterators is to just uh, use the iterators for buffer arguments and then using the host accelerator to copy back, uh, copy back data for, uh, to the host. I'm not sure uh, why the other idea is so popular. I'm, uh, currently, I'm using this one. I've started with the first ide idea. But this one allows me to synchronize exactly at the moment I want. At uh, the previous uh, be, uh, the previous file pointer, it would mean that if you want to access data on CPU, you have to use mut mutex, which is hidden in the buffer. So currently, I'm going uh, currently I'm going exactly with with this concept to send the data, and then whenever the user requires synchronization, I can create an accessor and hope that it will be an optimized data transfer from GPU. Uh, the restrictions are somehow uh, similar. We don't have recursion, as in OpenCL. And uh, basically, it's the same, with one uh, major exception, which is kernel name. The point is that a SQL standard creates, uh, creates the, makes a very important distinction between device and host, and ev even prefers a situation when you have a separate compiler from device and separate for host. And in such scenario, you have to link somehow the, uh, the, the created kernel and uh, the place where this kernel will be executed. Their idea uh, is to use is to explicitly name the kernels. Of course, it means that we cannot repeat the kernel names. This will, in, uh, as we'll see in the example future, uh, Th that compli it complicates uh, the AP algorithms API very much. The uh, kernels group uh, support the uh, submit a paper when they mention a few ways how C++ could, could be improved, and uh, and it would make uh, this deprecated. They could use these new C++ features to uh, to be able to generate uh, names, but. It, uh, it doesn't seem like it's going into C++, these ideas. So uh, what they use currently, the, uh, okay, sorry. So the problem is also that, uh, let's say we write a templated code, which depends on a floating point type. If we use explicitly the uh, kernel name inside the template, uh, the template method, we'll get an error from compiler because uh, he creates two instances of this template for floats and for doubles. In each scenario, he will create two different kernels, but with the same name. He cannot handle it, so uh, we'll get the application would not compile. One uh, one solution is to 
put the name explicitly in the template method. Of course, it could complicate things very much. You have uh, four or five kernels in the template method. You need four or five names. Uh, one solution proposed by Kronos is named execution policy. So they use the C++17 execution policy and uh, template it with kernel name. It works in, a in this way. Because they cannot take a, a lambda, uh, the name of the lambda for some reason, because it seems that it's not a globally visible name. If, if you specify a name for, uh, for the execution policy, they will use that, that name. But if you don't specify this name, they will use the default one, because they will assume that you are not passing a lambda, but a functor. Funct uh, basically a callable struct, for example, or, uh, or class. That means that we c we ha it has a globally visible name, we can use that name. Uh, personally, I don't like this idea uh, for two reasons. One of them is that it changes the API of execution policies. Second idea is that we bind the kernel name to execution policy. Execution policy has to put restrictions. It should not know anything about the submitted jobs. It also means that you cannot re reuse uh, the names, the execution policy names in future. I would like to see a solution when the uh, kernel name is binded to kernel or the device itself, or maybe to executor, but it's not also a, a very perfect idea. So having now uh, what is SQL and AMP, I will present uh, two compilers with which we are working right now. One of them is HCC, which is heterogeneous computing compiler. It started as, uh, the first name was Clamp. When I started working with it uh, last May, it was Clamp, then it was renamed to Kalmar. Uh, right now it's HCC. I don't know what is the uh, financial or legal uh, binding between the authors and AMD, but it seems that AMD is supporting right now the development. It, and, and actually they moved to AMD repository on GitHub. What is very important compiler is open source. It is based on LLVM, you, uh, you basically get a modified clank, and the compiler requires uh, libc++ implementation. Right now, uh, it seems that in the first uh, implementations you could just build the libc++ compiler, right now they require that you will put it in the standard directories. Uh, there are two frontends for this compiler, one of them is C++ AMP, one of them HC, which basically is almost the same with some uh, changes. And there were four backends. OpenCLC, so you can generate OpenCL code, target the device. OpenCL's PR, which is kind of intermediate representation. HSA, uh, intermediate representation. And there was also a possibility to directly generate code for AMD GPUs. And this slide was up to, day, up to date until two weeks ago, when these two backends has been deprecated. Uh, generally, uh, the, it still uh, is, exists in the source code. You can just uh, download the compiler, you can use it, but it's not going to be supported anymore. There are bugs in OpenCL backends, uh, so you, uh, you can fix them by yourself. You have the source code, but the authors won't, uh, won't fix it. And also it means that you cannot expect any more future, uh, any fut any future improvements. So now it, it means that you are limited to AMD's GPUs or the HSA uh, runtimes. The second uh, compiler we use is called Compute CPP. This is for SQL standard, developed by Codeplay. The idea is quite the same. They also use LLVM to generate the code, but it's closed source. You just get a binary. If something doesn't work, you cannot improve it. There is no, I think there is no official uh, release candidate we get like an early access, but right now uh, you have to wait, I believe. It, they have only one backend and one frontend. Frontend is SQL, backend is OpenCell's PR, which is a problem because CUDA doesn't support PR in any way. So in here you are limited to any other OpenCL implementation which supports PR, like AMD's implementation. Uh, as I said, the behavior uh, is that the Compute CPP is only a device compiler. So you generate a device binary code and a SQL header. But then later you can use any type of C++ compiler you want. It will, uh, they have some headers which automatically will include the binary code for the device. 
but, uh, but uh, we will do the linking. But you can still stay with the same compiler. You don't have to change anything except somehow to generate the code for each target. Are there any questions? So we know what standards we're going to use. We know the compilers. So let's talk uh, how it has been implemented. Uh, first of all, the biggest problems, I think it took like at least one or one and a half month of my GSOC project, was to integrate HPX with uh, compilers. There were many different kinds of errors and problems. First of all is, of course, that you have to use the libc++. Not only HPX has to be compiled, but every library used by HPX has to be compiled against libc++, which means on every platform you compile a whole bo uh, boost uh, by yourself. In every application you uh, use, you have to compile it against libc++. We're talking about Linux all the time. Of course, if, if you have a library which is closed source and you cannot recompile it, it's a huge problem. Because you have one compiler which deals with both host and device, we, ju uh, we just use it as a, the main compiler from CMake. In practice, it means that it's very easy for us to integrate with CMake. We ha you have to change, uh, you have to change few compilation flags to enable the GPU support. You just have to change the compiler, but it will work. You don't have to change anything in the CMake scripts. Of course, the problem is that you are compiling, you have to compile everything in HPX with HCC, which means that you, it will take more time and it will take more memory. This strat uh, strategy with SQL is quite different because you have two uh, two phase compilation. It means that for each target you have to generate first device code, but then you use the same compiler. It has the benefit that we can use the newest version. Uh, the one used by the Clang version generated, the source version was 3.5, I believe, which is not the newest one. Uh, here we still use the same uh, compiler. Uh, however, the difference is that you have to somehow make the CMake aware of two compilers. As far as I know, CMake doesn't support multiple compilers. In practice, Compute CPP released some scripts. What they do, you can create a pseudo dependencies of target to generate firstly the device code. Well, the benefit is that you still use the lib standard C++ and uh, you can just compile everything with the standard compiler and then say, I have a GPU aware application, so I first uh, can generate the GPU code, then compile in a normal way. And here we have the problem of, of named execution policy. In practice, it means that uh, if someone uses the algorithm, we need a name for that. Sorry. I think it's mistaken in my slide. I'm very sorry for that. I will go back to, uh, maybe it will be easier. Uh, so what we have done, we have uh, created two approaches to that problem. One of them, instead of name execution policy, which from the semantics doesn't make any sense, we use the kernel name as an executor parameter. So again, as I showed you before, use the with method to create uh, to use to add an additional parameter, a kernel name. Then, uh, then it will be forward somewhere up to the executor, and executor can decide whether it's an app executor. He will not use that name. If it's SQL executor, he will use that name. It's also not a perfect idea because executor itself uh, should not be aware of that thing. It also means that you have to, re for every compiler, for every compiled uh, kernel, you have to re uh, degenerate the, exec the new executor. Other idea is to explicitly name the kernel. So uh, we have created a very uh, lightweight wrapper around kernel. So instead of passing a general lambda, you just pay, uh, pass the uh, named kernel, which will only contain the, lam uh, the lambda and the name, nothing more. There is a just a, call op a generic call operator, it, which should be completely optimized by the compiler. This approach means that it will also work with, with parallel executor. He, should he will just ignore that name. 
So uh, going back, this is the one of things which breaks our API. So generally, the, uh, I started with for each n, which is one of the simplest algorithms to parallelize. Uh, this is the current parallel implementation in HPX. Uh, it means that there is a dispatch tag somewhere in the for each n, which goes into sequential parallel version. I could write a GPU parallel version. It could work. It could work without any problem, without any troubles. Uh, but it would mean that for every algorithm, I would repeat code. I would basically have to specialize for uh, my execution policy, which is a horrible idea. So I would I would like to have it integrated with that. Uh, this code basically it's some backend which uh, use the chunk size to split the uh, split the execution for different cores. I could reuse that. I could change something in the backend to uh, distribute to send the job into into GPU. So uh, we have loop n, which uh, invokes the function on an iterator and Increase, increments the inter, uh, iterator a few times, which means that you can, for one execution, you can process multiple elements. My first approach was uh, the first data placement approach. So just let the executor deal with delta placement, which means that I have to specialize the algorithm. Why? Because here in the input, I obtain as an STL iterator, which later will be used to place data on GPU. But the kernel, so this the thing which I want to execute on GPU, is, uh, is using exactly this type. So I would have to use this iterator type on GPU, which of course is not possible. So I, firstly, I have to specialize. Now I deprecated this implementation. And now I have provided an implementation which works exactly with, uh, with that uh, parallel implementation of algorithm. So, we have to provide bulk execute, which is a synchronous execution. The backend does some magic tricks, and we obtain a shape. Shape tells me the iterator with which I should start, data count, and chunk size. Chunk size is how, ma uh, how, much, I, uh, I, how, many, how much work should be done by one thread. Data count is how many threads I should create. So at that point, I assume that user knows that he cannot submit a, a normal iterator. The iterator I obtain is iterator to a GPU buffer. Buffer in SQL, array in AMP. So this is very generic uh, code to uh, decide how many threads I should uh, run. And this is the example of AMP, uh, of AMP implementation. I create a parallel for each region with as many threads I need, and then I uh, capture the iterator. I have to make a copy because everything which is captured by value is const. I can advance it to a position which start, which basically means this is the uh, thread index and chunk size. So I, uh, I'm moving as many as uh, it items as have been processed earlier, and I, unfortunately I have to recreate the tuple. The reason is that uh, HPX backends already requires that the wrapped lambda will accept tuple as an argument. It works. Uh, of course, I have to wait for the uh, ending of the jobs, of job. This one example works perfectly. The problem is, of course, the keyword restrict. I have to recreate the tuple from constructor. If I use make tuple, the compiler will complain that I don't have a restrict keyword. If I use some other functions I tried, also I could have problems with that. But here almost everything is the template of already has that keyword and it's hidden in the executor, so it works quite fine. And how do we use that? Uh, this is uh, the most simplest example, again. What changes from the example from par execution is that we explicitly create the buffers. Uh, what is nice, the buffers are created in executor. It's not a perfect idea, but in, uh, at least we do not know whether it's AMP or SQL. The interface is the same. Later, we specify the execution policy. This is our lambda. And here we use the iterators not to an STL container, which is vector, 
bus to an uh, bar to uh, GPU buffer. This will be forwarded, executed, synchronized function uh, uh, makes uh, copies the data back fr uh, to CPU from GPU. So this is the API for uh, for C++ plus AMP. With Cicl, I had to implement some other workarounds, which are not nice, but at least right now I'm not sure how to correctly implement that. We are working on that. Other function I went to is transform, and this is when things started to go wrong. You can implement transform in uh, many ways. One of these, uh, the one used by HPX, and maybe one of the simplest one is. In transfer, you get one input buffer, somehow modifies the, argue, uh, the data, and put it into a different buffer. Of course, you could have a generic implementation to send two buffers to GPU, but you can also use a zip iterator. A zip iterator uh, will take these two buffers and generate, uh, and the iterator value, which is returned, will be a tuple containing these two, uh, these elements from these uh, two buffers. So in practice, we will have to obtain uh, the input value, somehow process transform using the provided lambda, and then uh, write it to the output buffer. We have a binary transform. It's exactly the same, except that now we have tuple with three buffers and not uh, two buffers. So the question will be, if we have this implementation without any specialization for GPU execution policy, and use already existing GPU for each N implementation, will it work with AMP? Is there someone who thinks that it will work? Or maybe someone who thinks that it doesn't, it won't work? Personally, I believe that it won't work. I expected any, everything, including completely crashing the compiler. In practice, it works. The buffer, uh, the iterator will turn a tuple. Buffer, uh, the array, AMP, so another kind of GPU buffer, will accept these tuples without any problems. There is a proper alignment, and you have type, with, of course, if you use types with at least four <coughs> bytes. And actually, it worked from the beginning. I didn't have to modify anything. I've, so at the beginning, it was a huge success because it meant that I have now transform, copy, uh, transfer with uh, binary and some other any other algorithm which uh, works with which wo can be expressed in terms of a for each it means that it should work in AMP and I don't have to specialize anything so if it works with AMP it should work with SQL unfortunately not tuple is not a standard layout type the reason is that uh, one of the requirements from standard layout is that none of the uh, base classes can have non-static, uh, if you have multiple inheritance, you cannot have many base, uh, more than one base class with non-static members. The multiple inheritance implementation of Apple, of course, have multiple inheritance. I tried it with uh, lib standard C++ implementation, which has the recursive version. And even they have the multiple inheritance. They inherit from a head and some other called template. This is a problem. Uh, I have provided a workaround, which is an executor, which, takes a which is variadic and takes many iterators. With that it works, but unfortunately it breaks the API of executors. Uh, right now we do not have a clear idea how to solve this problem. One, of course, one could use a nested pairs, which, which doesn't look nice, but of, at least it will work. The pairs uh, are a standard layout, so it could be transferred to GPU. For the GPU algorith uh, algorithm, we mostly have the two uh, parameters, kernel name and the chunk size. The uh, OpenMP-like uh, chunk sizes from from parallel executor doesn't make sense. Generally, we use only static one, so you just specify how many, uh, how many, w how much work has to be executed by one, uh, by one thread. In practice, we could use the local work size. M calls it tiling. It means that you can group, 
create a, a smaller groups of threads which can communicate with themselves. But at least for this algorithm which we have implemented so far, there is no usage for that. Uh, of course, not everything works perfectly. Uh, we know, we have discovered few bugs in both compilers. For HCC, one of them which still is not fixed is that if you use the same executor for two algorithms, he will forget the second one. I don't know why. I cannot repeat this problem outside HPX. In theory, it could also be our problem, but we went through the code many times. We also we sent the code uh, to developers. At least n none of us uh, has an idea what could we have done wrong. There are uh, bugs in OpenCL, uh, OpenCL implementation. One of them is, for example, very simple. If he, if, his, if he will find an OpenCL platform which doesn't have a GPU, he will break. And will break in the worst possible way by a sec fault. It's a very small bug, uh, easy to fix, but you have to do it by yourself. A compute CPP, on the other hand, is harder to fix because you don't have the source. Uh, right now, we cannot use the chunk size. Because for the chunk size, we have to capture a cons uh, some integer inside the lambda. We cannot do it because the value will be incorrect. Also, it's a problem which uh, happens only in HPX. We can perfectly capture a functor, a lambda, but, uh, and, and buffer accessor, but we cannot capture integer. I have no idea why. I cannot repeat this outside HPX. Again, the bug is still somehow processed by the developers. The other problems may be the build scripts. It may be because uh, currently it, we have an early access, but uh, generally there is no easy way to, uh, to integrate it with existing build systems. One of the ideas that ComputeCPP started in, uh, has, has in the newest version is to have a script which, uh, which works as a compiler, as one compiler. For the results, results, I use the stream benchmark, uh, mostly because I wanted to check that once the results will be correct and that uh, looking at the memory bandwidth achieved at GPU, I won't be much worse than existing implementations. Uh, stream benchmarks consist of uh, four operations on three input arrays. So we copy, we, sc we scale one of the arrays, perform an addition and perform a triad. Uh, tried addition, but it's not a blessed sex speed, it's a little bit different. Which means that for us, from the API point of view, this is copy, unary transform, unary transform, binary transform. So this is everything you can e implement with a CL algorithm, if you have the GPU support. So first I went with HCC to check how, how it's doing. Of course, first I ensured that the results are correct. And uh, we used uh, the one of the newer GPUs, they are a few months old, Radeon R9 4 Nano. And we tried this on two backends. One of them is the OpenCL implementation, and the other one is HSA backend. The HSA is uh, AMD ROM. We could use it only on, uh, you could use it only on very specific hardware. You can have, you, you need to have a specific motherboard, uh, the newest Intel CPU and only the newest, I think, Fiji, uh, from Fiji up to the newer architecture, the newest AMD GPUs. Uh, for the sickle, uh, we use the same GPU, we, uh, but only, of course, on the OpenCL backend. On CUDA, we cannot, uh, we cannot test sickle because we don't have uh, SPR support. It took uh, NVIDIA four years to develop OpenCL 1.2 support. So I guess that PR maybe will come in 2020, not earlier. And, and uh, I use the GPU stream, it's open source package, which has already implemented this for QDAF and for OpenCL. And recently AMD has made a pull request and now they can also su uh, support the HSA directly. So let's see what we, uh, what we obtain. So I try to measure the bandwidth for all operations knowing that the data stays on the GPU. And firstly, uh, we should look at the OpenCL backend, which is definitely the worst. This is a logarithm scale. And the blue one, uh, the green, one of the green ones, the lower triangle, is the generic OpenCL version. So we can see that we have quite important overhead for small jobs. 
this is just the number of double precision floating points elements. But when we reach about 10 millions, so it's about uh, 200 megabytes for arrays, we are somehow similar, so we don't lose that much. But uh, there is some overhead for small jobs, but still, it's GPU, you don't use it for small jobs. The HSA back uh, backend uh, got a little bit better performance and a little uh, smaller overhead, so both my implementation algorithm and HSA are above OpenCL. It doesn't mean that it will be always like this. It could, uh, we use it on two different, uh, on two different uh, PCs, mostly because uh, we, we needed to use a cluster node which had the motherboard on which we could use HSA. But, uh, so, in practice it could be a little bit different, but generally what is important for me is that I can show that my results are correct, not only are correct, but still we can have from directly from C++ some performance which is not much worse. I'm satisfied at that point with not much worse because I know that the compilers are at, the, at this stage of development when you worry about correctness, not about optimal performance. I have also tried on QDAN with Tesla K80. Uh, again, I use the GPU stream benchmark to get uh, QDAN, QDAN uh, results. And the, again, the AMP uh, targeting OpenCLC. OpenCLC because this PR, of course, is not supported. So the only thing, we, uh, the important thing which should be noticed is that the overhead is uh, much bigger. So still we need more, more, more and elements to process to get into a similar performance. The problem is with Sickle. Uh, I have tried this benchmarking for many days. I have looked at uh, the code, tried the very different things. The problem was that I could not really get a stable measurement. So it could mean also that this plot is completely wrong. Maybe. Uh, I don't know at that point. But it's, I cannot find a bug in our impl HPX implementation. What happens is that if we remember that the bandwidth is logarithmic scale, we are much worse. And also that the behavior is not consistent. In previous schemes, we've seen that we are getting closer, but the uh, measurement is consistent. We only had a constant overhead. Uh, let's say maybe not constant, but overhead, but somehow the timings are quite similar. They are just a little bit worse by constant value. Here, uh, here it, it was even a uh, huge trouble to generate uh, the data because there was so much variance in the results. It could be bug, it could also mean that the compiler at that point doesn't care so much about optimized code. But at least the results are correct. Uh, there's also the problem of overhead for compilation. Uh, with HCC we build the whole HPX, which is about two and a half times slower on uh, 20 jobs on a cluster node. The benchmark example which I used uh, went from 20 to 48 seconds. It could not be so bad on other examples. The problem is that uh, HPX uses heavily templates and it's known, uh, from, it's known from killing the compilers. What surprised me uh, is that HCC use approximately the same amount of memory as uh, in the AMP mode and in the normal mode. So we still, it seems that we create, we all, we all, we do the all necessary things to create to compile a C++ program, but we do not have so much more memory operations. Binary size is also comparable. I would say up to five, ten percent difference. I think it's acceptable. I expected something more, uh, something worse. With compute CPP, it's different because we only use this compiler for GPU targets. Well, we could integrate that uh, in that way, that for every file we generate first device code and then ho uh, host code, but it doesn't make any sense. Uh, here, uh, the slowing is a little bit, uh, the slowing of compiler, the ratio is uh, smaller. The reason may be that he just generates, uh, he generates the abstract syntax tree, gets the in uh, necessary information to generate PR code, but then uh, doesn't care about anything else. Again, peak memory usage, I even think that with uh, it was even smaller. The binary size is also quite similar, so we are not losing that much. It's mostly about time, but I think it's about 
it's acceptable, it's not 20 times slower. So uh, this is what we have achieved so far. It works, it gives correct results, sometimes it breaks, sometimes there are problems with compilers, but uh, it seems that we are in a point that we can continue the development and go for other goals. Uh, one of them is the problem of data placement. We uh, currently we use one GPU. We would like maybe to use uh, multiple GPUs. So here we go back to this partition vec vector idea. If we use a different allocator, this is something uh, we want to use at that point. We could use this same par uh, partition vector to place data on GPU and also implement segmented algorithm. So at that point, we have something I call GPU-aware data structure. Also, this is the problem uh, of separating algorithm and containers. Again, we can use an allocator. Uh, GPUs also have a different types of memory. We have the global memory. Right now, we are putting everything on global memory. But we can also use constant memory. It may, may uh, make some sense. We can also, in future, use local memory. Right now, everything is placed on executor code, which, as I said before, is semantically is wrong. It's wrong because executor should not know where to put data. So probably, uh, we're not, right now, we are moving with ideas how to use allocators to place data on GPU. Uh, one, uh, well, we have few algorithms at that point. Darf, this is a set of uh, parallel algorithms. So most of them are implemented in general executor in HPX. Uh, right now I have uh, for both for each, I have transform, I have copy. Uh, right now I want to move into an index based for each uh, for loop because it makes uh, possible to write a very sp uh, much more generic uh, code, for example stencils. Other thing I want to hit uh, soon are algorithms which, uh, like transform reduce, which I think is not mentioned here, which requires some more specific treatment of GPUs. And then uh, all these ideas about allocators went into project HPX Compute. This is something, it's not only my work, this is also work of Thomas Haller who works on the CUDA uh, backend. So we want to have something which is much more behaves like standard STL implementation. We could use uh, the backends which are the CUDA backend, which would target NVIDIA GPUs, and HCC of SQL, which currently can hit only AMD GPUs. Uh, we have worked on a paper uh, which is submitted for the f workshop in Germany in a few mo uh, two months, I believe, on which basically describes how we want to, uh, what wo how to want to implement, and what, which, what kind of API wo we want to use for standard compliant, Algor uh, algorithm and execution, basically execution policies for heterogeneous uh, accelerators. That will be all. Uh, f the description of my project and the future goals. Thank you for your attention. Do you have any questions? Yes? So I guess, how is how does this relate to any of the things that are going on in the standardization uh, community now? Uh, there is, um, I think, uh, yes, the, the question is that how is it related to ongoing processes in standard C++? And I know that Kronos is moving with their idea of SQL. And they have submitted papers to committee meetings. Uh, we, we, we still somehow cooperate with, with them on that. So. Generally, with the executor's concept, we have generated the same idea, I would say, about that. But we want not only to, uh, we want to hit more backends, in, the, in that sense. But the API ideas, I think we are on the same uh, way. So is this mostly being handled under like the concurrency TS? A uh, parallelism TS. Yes. Basically parallelism TS. Yes. Execution policies right now and future executors, hope, f maybe. So, so HPX is the closest um, to an existing implementation of the parallelism TS that we have. Yeah, we have all the executors, we have all the parallel algorithm. And the parallelism TS is, in, is going into 17. Yeah. Okay. I, I think it's everything from this specification. I'm not sure about um, The dynamic execution policies was left out, which uh -huh. is good because it, it, okay. it's kind of broken. Uh, Brian said that HPX is the closest existing implementation to parallelism TS, which will be the standard in C17. 
So yes, of course, it's not something which is standard right now, but we are moving uh, in future uh, for the future goals. Let's see what happens because well, we, we believe, I think many people believe that heterogeneous architectures will be very important in future, especially if you have a shared memory systems. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. We are. I think we are. We thinking more, much more about twenty. Yes. Um, can we re can functions that we're shipping to the GPU throw exceptions? Uh, no, I said that uh, this yeah. is no. But I, I yeah. understand that right now so they can't. But conceptually, could they? Uh, the question is, could they? Uh, could functions throw? Uh, could functions execute on the GPU for exceptions? Well. At least from my understanding, it would be hard. It, you could have an implementation which deals with that in such a way that somehow you catch the exception. You could catch the f execution. You could catch in some kind of error on GPU execution, but it wouldn't wouldn't work in an exception. I, I don't think it will be on the from the point of view hardware. It would be not, not easy. You could you could treat an exception in that way, translate it somehow, to treat it as an error code. This is what you can return. And then uh, the runtime on CPU could detect the error code and let's say, have, say you what kind of exception has been thrown. But I don't think that uh, GPU hardware itself uh, can provide some kind of support for dynamic program exception because of the execution model. So my, my follow up to that would be if the lambda that you write for your parallel for each has a throw in there. What is the correct thing to do? For your compiler to give you an error? Uh, Brian, the question is what should the compiler do in case that uh, in case that the lambda can throw an exception? Yes, it should be rejected by the compiler. Okay. The specification itself says it's not it's not allowed. Uh, this, well, that's the issue. The specification doesn't say that it's not allowed. The specification yeah. Um, no, it, it tells. It's actually, it, the parallelism TS is vague. On the no, no, uh, yes, I mean the specification yeah. for MP in yeah. So the existing hardware, but yeah, in yeah. that sense. We, we have to, the reason I'm asking is of course. It, it appears that there is an issue in the way that the exception handling is kept from the parallelism TS. And the question is basically, there's, e there's either two answers. Either one, um, we have to specify that, we have to say that your, your, your callables to the parallelism mm -hmm. TS can't throw that they need to have no throw call operators, or we have to say that, that they're going to throw and you need to do exception handling, in which case we have to specify something that would basically require the GPU implementation. Sure. Well, f <laughs> maybe f so I, I, f I think the easiest and, uh, well, if the question the discussion is about what to do in sense of the parallelism uh, standard, uh, yeah. standard way, what to do with uh, GPU executors we, and the treatment of exceptions. Well, of course, the easiest way is to say no exceptions are allowed. Yeah. And I don't think, even if it's possible to have a support on GPUs, I don't, I, is it worth it? Yeah, so, so then the question becomes, is it reasonable for us to say that if that your callable that you pass into the parallelism TS mm -hmm. is, gonna ha is not going to throw exceptions? Or to just say that it is undefined behavior if it throws an exception? <laughs> It could be, it could be the either one, or just by b well undefined behavior, but on the side of compiler, because uh, as long okay, as yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if we, uh, when we'll get a C plus plus compiler which natively supports generation of GPU code. Yeah, uh, it won't happen probably. Uh, I think it will happen. I think I think that's the direction that that this is. Uh, yes, it should be, but uh, let's say we have. You can see that we have two different ideas already. Uh, new ideas, and then you can you have let's say the CUDA, which you can. I think uh, what Thomas is doing is trying to use preprocessor to some kind of tricks to force a CUDA compiler to generate the code from C++. But, but both AMD and NVIDIA have indicated that, that moving forward they're going to be using a single source absolutely. language approach mm. and that's, that single source language will be C++. So uh, this will happen, yeah. it's just a question of what uh, Yes, uh, it, uh, Brian's comment was that both NVIDIA and AMD are now going into direction of having single source file and compilation. So we believe both, I think both, that it will happen at some point that we have native support in C++ compiler, but who knows when. Yeah. If there are no other questions, then thank you very much.